As Safeway Director of Pharmacy, it's my pleasure to welcome you to the Capitol Hill Safeway. We are so honored to have District of Columbia Mayor Muriel Bowser and DC Health Director Dr. LaQuandra S. Nesbitt here this morning. Since our partnership began in December 2020, Safeway has been proud to join forces with the Mayor's Office and DC Health to provide COVID-19 vaccinations for the District of Columbia. In addition to providing vaccines at Safeway's 10 Washington pharmacies, we have worked with DC Health to present clinics at sites across all wards of the district. And most recently, Safeway and DC Health have begun setting up booster shot sites. To date, Safeway has administered more than 150,000 shots in DC, and we are committed to continuing our work with DC Health to ensure everyone who wants a COVID-19 vaccine can get one. This morning, we're also joined by three district seniors, including Frank Malone from Ward 5, Haiti Pierce from Ward 5, and Jermaine Leftwich from Ward 6. I'm now pleased to invite Frank Malone to the podium. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Welcome. My name is Frank Malone. I'm a citizen of the District of Columbia, native citizen. I'm here because I'm a father, a grandfather, and a member of this city's community leadership. And I want to stand up, let everyone know that our mayor has been doing an excellent job with the pandemic. As I look at the flags that are on the mall for the 650,000 people who have already passed, I wonder about the leadership of their cities. But for our city, there is no question. Mayor Bowser has helped us to face the pandemic head on. She has kept us safe. She's given us accessibility and availability and encouraged us. She wants to keep our seniors safe. And for the 120,000 who are in this city, who are over 60, we want to say thank you, Mayor Bowser. There's a written in a book that I read, it said, love thy neighbor, but love is an action. Thank you very much. Well, good morning, everybody. Good morning. And thank you, Frank, who's going to sit down and get his flu shot. He's just sitting for now? Okay. Um, I want to thank everybody. I thought I was narrating the flu shot. <laughs> I'm glad I don't have to do that. I'll leave that for Dr. Nesbitt and all of our wonderful pharmacy team here at Safeway. Um, and this is my first time in this Safeway. Uh, it's the, the old Safeway was much different. Uh, when I walked in, I said it looked like a fall harvest. And I'm just delighted that the Safeway team has not only partnered with us on our response to COVID, um, but has been um, providing fresh food options in Washington, D.C. for over 100 years. So let's give a big hand to Safeway. I may have gotten that age wrong of Safeway. Somebody will correct me and tell me how long DC is, uh, Safeway has been in D.C. And uh, we're here to talk about vaccines, of course, and Frank is right uh, to highlight how we get over COVID is through vaccination. And so we are encouraging everyone, uh, if they haven't been vaccinated yet, to get vaccinated and for everyone who's eligible for the booster shot to do that too. Uh, but we're also talking about the annual flu. Dr. Nesbitt will tell you um, how well last year we did with the flu uh, and we don't want to uh, risk going into another flu cycle this year so everyone uh, should be getting their flu shot uh, and I also want to say uh, if you are 12 or older and haven't received your first dose of, a, of the COVID-19 vaccine you really must do so as soon as possible uh, there are people who are already getting their third shot it's safe it's free and it's effective. 
And it is especially important as we head into the fall and winter months when we know people will be spending more time inside, gathering um, for various events uh, that you need and we need as much protection as possible. So um, now for our residents who are already fully vaccinated, we want to make sure they understand how they uh, can and should be getting a booster shot. And Dr. Nesbitt will talk about that in a moment. We know our seniors have done an amazing job getting vaccinated. 92.5% of DC residents are partially or fully vaccinated who are 65 or older. Uh, and they're going to tell the next generation behind them exactly how to be like them. And it's not just COVID that we're thinking about at this time of year either, but the flu shot. And we want to uh, encourage you to look at dchealth.dc.gov backslash flu uh, for the many locations that you can get your flu shot and, of course, from your own provider. One big, big difference between the COVID-19 vaccine and the flu shot is the flu shot is for all people six months or older. Um, so even the little ones who are not yet eligible for the COVID-19 vaccine um, can and should be getting their flu shots. Uh, we also want people to know that you can get the COVID-19 vaccine and the flu shot at the same time. So with that, I'm going to ask Dr. Nesbitt to offer some specifics about the booster. We'll take some questions and then take the shot. Thank you, Madam Mayor. And it's exciting, always exciting to be uh, here with our partners at Safeway. Uh, earlier today, Amir uh, was reminding me of, um, it, it puts things into perspective how uh, much work has gone into responding to the pandemic during one of our virtual uh, meetings about uh, several months ago um, when we were planning logistics and talking about the types of vaccine, our COVID-19 vaccine that Safeway could handle. And as he mentioned, they've been a great partner uh, working in some of our senior community centers and our park and recreation centers to expand their reach beyond the locations, the physical Safeway locations that they have and allowing their pharmacists to actually go out into community, uh, meeting people where they are uh, and offering COVID-19 vaccines. So I think we wanna applaud Safeway again for just being creative in terms of how they have been able to uh, assist us here in our response here in the District of Columbia. Uh, so it's, it's time to get everyone reminded and focused again on flu season. Uh, flu season is upon us, and last year we talked a lot about uh, flu season because of its potential to have a great impact on our hospital and healthcare system. Uh, we knew we were having people who were being hospitalized at higher rates because of the COVID-19 pandemic, and we did not have vaccines uh, for COVID-19 at the time. And so having everyone six months and older getting their flu shot became even more important last year and this year than it had been in the past to reduce the risk of people being hospitalized for the flu. We had the lowest rates uh, in the country and in the DC of influenza than we had had in quite some time because of people getting out and getting their vaccine, paying attention to how well they washed their hands, they kept their distance. More importantly, they stayed home when they were sick and we want people to continue to do all of those things this year. Uh, so it's not too early in the year. It's not too early in the fall for people to start getting your flu vaccine. And as Mayor Bowser mentioned, that vaccine is available for everyone six months and older. You can get it at your local pharmacy. You can get it when you go in for your annual well visit uh, with your health care provider. Don't miss the opportunity to get your flu vaccine. And as we continue to learn so much more, about our COVID-19 vaccines. You can get those vaccines with other important vaccines, your routine pediatric vaccines, your flu vaccine on the same day. Uh, so make that appointment to get your flu vaccine, your COVID-19 vaccine. If you haven't yet gotten your first dose, you can do those two things on the same day. And if you're one of the people for whom we're recommending a booster, we want you to go ahead and do those two things on the same day. So if you got the Pfizer vaccine and you're over the age of 65, we recommend that you get a booster. If you're between 18 and 64, 
and you have high risk health conditions, chronic health conditions, and you receive the Pfizer vaccine, we also recommend that you go ahead and you get a booster. And as we have been doing for several weeks now, uh, anyone who has who is immunosuppressed, we recommend that you get a booster of the Moderna or Pfizer vaccine, and you can get your flu vaccine in combination with that as well. Uh, so don't miss the chance to keep yourself well, to help keep our community well uh, as we go into the fall season, and we all look forward to spending time with our friends and our family uh, and celebrating the holidays. And getting these two vaccines are one way uh, to continue to protect yourself uh, and be able to celebrate as we help to move toward the end of this pandemic. So I look forward to taking any questions that you may have with Mayor Bowser. Thank you. Okay, any questions? Questions? Yes. Hey, Mayor Tom Rousey with Channel 7 News. Um, th this may be for Dr. Nesbitt, I'm not sure, but I sure. just wanted to kind of get the latest you're hearing about when maybe folks who have taken Moderna, Johnson & Johnson might be able to do this, and also when you think it'll be recommended for possibly everybody, not just those categories. Sure. Uh, so there's um, a couple of important steps that have to occur in order for uh, booster vaccines to be recommended. And that first step is for the FDA's advisory committee to convene. And they've scheduled meetings in the next week or so. I believe the dates are October 13th and 14th um, to discuss data related to both the J&J &J vaccine as well as Moderna. Uh, so you should expect that in the days following that convening, uh, there'll be some additional recommendations made uh, in one direction or the other for boosters for those vaccines. But I, I do want to make uh, sure I emphasize that if people are immunosuppressed or um, their immune system does not function as well as others, uh, the recommendation has already been made for them to receive an additional dose of either the Moderna or Pfizer vaccine. Does that mean that if I... Uh got the Moderna initially, I should come now? Or does it mean I should wait if I'm immunosuppressed? If you're a person who is immunosuppressed, your healthcare provider has told you that, that tends to be a relatively small uh, subset of the population and you receive the Moderna vaccine, your healthcare provider has made a recommendation for you to receive an additional dose. You should have taken care of that already. If you haven't, you can come in and do that now. Uh, we do have members of our community who have already done that. Uh, it's appropriate to do so. That recommendation has been made. That's different than someone who has a chronic health condition who is not immunosuppressed, uh, independently making a decision to go ahead and receive an additional dose of J&J &J or Moderna. That recommendation has not been made. Uh, yes, first Dr. Uh, Nesbitt and then Mayor uh, with a quick follow-up. But Doctor, we are hearing some reports in a nearby state that uh, walk-in pharmacies have been offering a Moderna uh, so-called booster, even though the individuals may not fit into the categories that you just described. Uh, is, if that's going on, do you think that could be a problem or what's, what's your thoughts? So uh, all, all of this can have the potential to get uh, a little bit confusing for people uh, in the language, right? Uh, so what all of the states are pretty much doing is something called self-attestation, right? Uh, so we have immunization records, we have immunization registries, but what happens here today when you walk into a pharmacy is the pharmacist asks you questions about your previous vaccination history, your vaccine history. What other vaccines have you received in the past? Was it Moderna? Was it Pfizer? Was it J&J? &J? And we rely on people to be truthful. Uh, they also ask you your past medical history to determine your eligibility for the vaccine. We rely on people to be truthful, what's called self-attestation. Uh, we believe in low barrier access to health services. So we're not asking people to bring in letters from their doctor, lab results from their doctor, to provide any proof that they are in fact immunosuppressed in order to receive those additional doses of the vaccine. Uh, so again, creating low barrier access for people is what's most important. Uh, so we, um, we are, uh, skewing toward being able to create easier access for people who would have greater benefit as opposed to creating a very rigid structure that would keep people out. Uh, and Mayor, uh, on a related but slightly off topic uh, question, uh, one uh, organization in the city that's been in the news recently does offer some health related referral services, among other things, 
but I'm referring to Casa Ruby, uh, many in the community are asking if the city, you or the Department of Human Services will disclose the reason that uh, the DHS has uh, defunded this organization, Casa Ruby. No explanation has been given yet. Um, I, I would have to get back to you on that, Lou, to see what uh, additional specifics we can offer. We're certainly, I'm certainly uh, happy to make the Department of Human Services available for your questions. Would they possibly disclose that then? Listen, we, we do business with organizations all the time, and sometimes we continue our relationship, and other times we don't. Uh, largely, it's a, based on an evaluation of the effectiveness of the program. So I, I can say that. Uh, and I can also say, though, there are opportunities all the time for organizations to work with us. Um, and in, in some grant rounds or contract rounds, it doesn't work out, and in, in subsequent ones, it might, and that may be the case with Casa Ruby. Yes. Uh, I have a, another, this is an off-topic comment, but it seems like we've said so many times it was another violent weekend in the district. Um, we were looking at the crime stats, though, versus pre-pandemic. A lot of crimes are down, but what is it about homicide? Is there any trend that's making it especially difficult to get under control? Um, I, could, I could think of another way to answer your question, or I can just tell you what I told you last week, um, which is the case, uh, that, that we don't know, we don't have any particular one reason why violent crime related to guns has gone up. Uh, I think the chief and I, when we were uh, together in Columbia Heights, talked very specifically about some some trends of concern, um, more guns, more people carrying guns, um, less accountability um, for people in the system for using guns, um, in addition to a global pandemic that has changed the way people work and go to school and interact with services. So we know that there are a lot of things that have happened in the last 18 months, all of which um, could be contributing uh, to the violent crime that we've seen. Uh, we were very specific last week uh, looking at our data about areas that we thought would respond to more police presence, and those five areas are part of our fall crime initiative. Um, and sadly, I think that we, we saw some violence over this weekend in one of those areas, which uh, emphasizes and reinforces the fact that we need um, we need additional resources, police resources in those areas, uh, and that's where we'll be focusing. Okay, you're on. The first shot? No, not really. Not really? No, no. Okay. So you can experience some side effects with this third shot. Typically, it's seen in the injection site, so it can be red, it can be sore, it can be painful. Some other symptoms that you may experience are going to be like flu-like symptoms. So muscle pain, joint pain, fever, nausea, tiredness, and fatigue. Okay, if I pull that up for you. I just earned it. Oh. <laughs> Again, I get you to relax your arm for me, okay? Did you have any questions before we continue? No. No. We've gone over everything. All right. Tiny dot of blood. Is that it? That's it. That's all? Yep, that's it. Apply <laughs> some of pressure. And we're just going to stick your Band-Aid on for you, okay? Thank you. You're welcome. All right. You Thank are good you to go. Much. Thank right. you. I do answer to wait five minutes before you leave. In case if you have any symptoms, you're able to sit right on our side, okay, Mr. Malone? Thank you. Thank much. you. Number two. <laughs> 